it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. Today I have got this lovely, really pretty watercolour card. It's watercoloured, it's heat embossed. There is pretty much nothing that you can't like about it because it is gorgeous, she says. Humbly not. Um, I'm using the Humming Along Cling Mount stamp set and the matching Hummingbird framelits. These are in the Spring Summer catalogue. Uh, they are a bundle, which is always useful. Um, so if you buy them together, you do save 10%. I'm just trying to find my catalogue, which I seem to have misplaced. Oh, no, buried. There is a difference. There is a difference between misplaced and buried, because uh, I just want to try and find it for you. I seem to remember it's reasonably near the front, but I could be wrong. Um, so it's, as I say, it is a bundle, uh, which we, we like a bundle. Do remember that bundles only last for uh, the current catalogue. So if you, if you want to save money, you need to buy sooner rather than later. That's just typical, isn't it? It must be further at the back, because um, I know it is in uh, this catalogue. <sighs> One day, one day, I will organise myself um, in advance, but clearly that's not today. It's a stunning, there we are, there we are, um, I just missed it. So it's here in the catalogue, uh, so here's the, um, the bundle, so as you can see it's 10% off, it says it's cling mount, um, and they're gorgeous absolutely gorgeous. So uh, I have already done a wee bit of prep because watercolour can take a bit of time. Um, so I'm going to do this one this bit live but I have already done the flower. This is actually still just drying but the principles are the same so I thought I would just save some time. Um, we are using watercolour paper. To make this card you need nearly a whole sheet. Um, but that's fine, it's there to be used, so we should use it. Uh, I'm using aqua painters, uh, and for the background, which is this um, Bermuda Bay um, sort of soft background, uh, really easy. You, you need ink in your lid or a reinker. Reinker would be just as good, um, but you need, you need ink. Um, and then all I'm going to do is pop. Put lots of water, just squeeze your barrel of your aqua painter so you've got a nice wet brush. Uh, every single one you do will be different, so do not expect them to be the same. Uh, the principle is the same, but they will all come out slightly differently depending on how wet your paper is, etc. Um, etc. Et so just pick up some of your ink, and then all I'm doing is dropping the ink onto the paper. Um, and I'm working from the two ends towards the middle and then just sort of encouraging it uh, to come towards the centre. Now if you do run out of ink and you've done what I've done and squeezed it into the lid and uh, then you need you suddenly discover you need more ink, you can do two things, um, or one of two things. You can either get your re-ink or you can just take a block and just touch the block onto your ink pad and then that will give you another palette to work from. It's just I want I want a bit more colour at the top so it's a bit more obvious and a bit more at the bottom and that's just so that it sort of frames everything and then in the middle I'm quite happy for it to be uh, more you know kind of watercoloured. Um, so that is that. Now I'm going to leave that to dry naturally if come finishing everything else it's still wet. I will blast it with um, the heat tool. But uh, the other thing you need is some um, kitchen paper or something absorbent. You can use an old rag, that sort of thing. Um, when you close your pad, if you've still got water in the base, do not turn it upside down because it will fall onto your ink pad, which is not something you really want to do. So I'm just going to make sure that's not actually running anywhere, which it's not, 
and just pop that to one side so I can come back to it later. Um, whilst we do our uh, stamping for the hummingbird. So I have already got prepped my Stamparatus because for this I would always say the Stamparatus is your friend when you are heat embossing on watercolour paper because you probably need to stamp more than once. Um, first thing to do obviously is, I say obviously, it may not be obvious, uh, just get some embossing buddy on your watercolour paper just to make sure that you haven't got any static and then take your Versamark ink pad um, and ink up your stamp really well and stamp and press. Now watercolour paper is not uh, totally flat, it's got you know dents um, so I do like to do it at least twice and possibly three times. Just have a look and see if I can get the light. Yeah, I think I'll do another another time. And because you're stamping with your Stamparatus, you know you're stamping in the same place every time, which is always good to know. Right, so let's take that out, just so that it's out of the way. Grab that out of the way. and grab my copper embossing powder. Now I have mine in a tub, you can just put it out of the little pot onto um, a piece of folded paper, a coffee filter, that sort of thing, um, and then scoop it back into your little pot. But I do find, because I run in-person classes, I do find that a tub is a better way of making sure that some of it gets back in the pot. Uh, just a little more. Now, if you're really unhappy with how it's stamped, uh, once you have uh, embossed, you can actually go back and stamp it again because it's going into your Stamparatus, which I, I may show you because uh, I'm not convinced I've got that completely how I want it. However, so just get, if you've got any stray bits, just get rid of those. I mean it doesn't matter too much because we will be, um, just tap the back of it, we will be die cutting so it's not vital vital but grab your heat tool and heat up. Yeah, it's the beak that I'm particularly concerned about uh, rather than any of the other bits but um, so we may have another go. So heat up your heat tool and then watch the magic And I really, I can't watch this enough. I'm sorry about the noise. There is absolutely nothing I can do about the noise. There we go. So first thing to do is to make sure that this is dry before you do anything else because it can, particularly on the thicker paper, it can take a wee while to set properly. Now looking at it, I'm, I am going to give it another go and as I say this is the joy of the Stamparatus because I can just pop it back in the same place, pop my magnet back on grab my Versamark again and just ink that up again and you can just stamp over the top. Shouldn't need more than that. And because you're going back into exactly the same place um, it should all be fine. Famous last words. So grab my board, grab my powder and just add another layer of embossing powder over the top. I'm not sure that I've made that much difference. 
a wee bit. It is a wee bit better. Okay. Seems to have managed to get embossing powder pretty much everywhere. No surprise there then. Right, so our heat gun should still be reasonably warm. So just heat that again. I have still got a few gaps, but I'm not too worried because we are going to die cut. And just re remelt. Okay, so I'm just going to waft that a bit. And whilst that is just finishing its setting, I'm going to start making the card because I want to die cut the hummingbird before we watercolour it because uh, it will actually be a little bit quicker. Right, this is still a little damp, so I'm going to blast that as well. So this I'm just going to waft a bit, which I'll get my card base out of the way. Now, obviously, in the privacy of your own home, when you're not up against time, uh, you can just leave this to dry until it's dry. Um, but obviously, for the sake of the video, it's better if it is dry. Right, OK. Oops. So, I have a piece of Pacific Point um, cardstock, which I've cut in half the other way. Because the card is um, landscape rather than portrait, I like to have the cards like that because if they're like that, they can squish down, um, I find. It's a personal choice. So all I've done is cut it in half at 10.5 centimetres and then scored down the middle at 14.8, 14.9, that sort of point. Um, the A4 paper can be just a wee bit out sometimes. Um, it's just, you know, we are talking millimetres here. Um, so that's our base. And then the copper is a tiny, weeny, 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 teeny, weeny bit of copper around the outside. So I've cut this at five and five eighths by three and seven eighths, my usual size. Um, but I have taken the middle out. So this is basically a one centimetre frame. And then I'm just going to add, I was going to add snail doesn't want to play. Okay, we will add some tear and tape. Um, the problem with foil, not problem, it's not a problem. Um, foil has a slightly slick backing um, and snail doesn't really like sticking to it. Um, so uh, tear and tape probably is the better option. Uh, you could use multi-purpose liquid adhesive. Um, but because I'm using such a small frame, um, I'm loath to do that with liquid adhesive because um, it might squish out the sides. So just peel that off and then we can get onto the exciting bit of watercolouring because that is really the exciting bit. Right, get rid of all of those bits. And so this is just going to pop down like that. And obviously you've got this nice bit um, to um, use for something later. There we are. Now this I am going to put a bit of snail on the back just at the sides. And then I'm going to fill the middle with liquid adhesive, but that's just to, this is just to make sure that um, it sticks onto the onto the foil, and then just come in with a little bit of the liquid adhesive, and just pop that down. And it really is just a tiny hair of smidge of a frame, and then we'll be putting that to there. But now this is properly set, I can use the, the frame to 
die cut. So let's get that sorted out, won't take long. Okay. Now obviously you could use blends for this, so you could use Memento ink um, and blends. Uh, that would be a really, really nice um, finish, but I just wanted to do something a little different. So I've got my smaller nib on my um, aqua painter because you get two, you, the set is both. So you get a narrow, a small nib and a fatter nib. So I tend to use the small nib for the uh, detailed work. So I'm adding into my colour scheme. Uh, we've already got Bermuda Bay. I've got Granny Apple Green, which I've already used on the leaves. Um, I have got Mango Melody and Melon Mambo, which I've already used on the flower. And then I'm adding in Pacific Point, which is why my card is on a base of Pacific Point. I won't actually be using the Granny Apple Green for the bird. Um, that will just be the other colours. So... Let's start with his head, and I don't actually need that sitting there, do I? Um, so, watercolouring always, when I say ooh, always start with a clean brush. Right, okay, um, fill in the area you want to have your colour in, and I tend to go over it a few times because the first time you go over it, it kind of absorbs straight into the paper. Uh, and then just add your colour where you want it. Now this I want reasonably yellow, well mango, um, but I'm going to just leave, I'm not going to add colour onto the, the chest area. Um, then I'm going to add some more water here. And as I say, I'm going to go back over it because it does tend to just absorb into the paper. So the trick is to have a light where you can actually see that there is water. And then just grab some of your Mango Melody and just watch it run. It's lovely. And then I'm just going to bring that into the, the front piece just a little, just so that it sort of blends in. And then that is all I want for those two colours. Now, obviously, you can use any colour scheme you want for a hummingbird. Hummingbirds do come in pretty much any colour. Um, so, you know, just go for it. Right, I need some more ink in my Bermuda Bay because it has now dried out. Just squeeze. And I tend to find putting my thumbs on the base is the best idea. And then you get a nice splodge. Let me just check the... I might need a little bit more Pacific Point while I'm squeezing. Um, and then, yes, I just find pushing the base with my thumbs is, is more efficient. I think it's because my thumbs are stronger than the rest of my hand. Um, so just add water where you want Bermuda Bay. And I'm doing these two sections together because I want more colour here than I want here. So I'm actually going to see if I can lift off some of the water from there. There we go. And then again, just drop it on. And watch the water do the magic. And then for the for this area, I don't want it quite as dark. So again, we're just adding ink and letting the water do its thing. I will just kind of help it along a wee bit, um, but you don't want to go mad, because I don't want this too dark down here. Um, so that's pretty much all I want of the Bermuda Bay. I might just add a wee bit more here. There we go. And then again, clean your brush off. So that's all of the Bermuda Bay. And then Pacific Point. Um, this is where I'm really going to go wild with my water. 
because I need everything else to be Pacific Point or a shade thereof. Now the only trick is to try to not go outside the lines. You can go over the lines, but you don't want to go outside the lines if you can help it. It's not the end of the world if you do, but just try not to. And then say just add your colour in and watch it go. And you can kind of tip it if you want to get it to run. Can you see that that's running? Can I see if you can see? Yes, you can. So just add your water or your ink in and just watch it run. And it's just magic. I love it. And it's just such an easy technique. And because you've got the embossing, that helps keep you inside the lines. Um, so I'm going to leave that bit for the moment and then come up. I've just wiped off my brush a little bit. I'm not too fussed if there's a little bit of pale blue in here. Um, and then I'm going to do this. I do need to actually go back and do its beak at some point. But at the moment, that is what I'm holding it by. So we'll not be doing that. Now these I want, again, to be you know, reasonably solid in the middle and not at the end. So again, we'll just add the colour and help it along a wee bit. I just love it. And then again, where the where you want the colour to run, just encourage it a bit. Uh, maybe add a bit more water to those areas. As I say, the um, the watercolour paper will absorb the water. Uh, that is, after all, pretty much what it's all about. Um, but because of that, you do need to add some more in if it started to dry out. And then just let that run. Let's just add that there. And just come back to these areas and just... These are pretty dry now, I mean, as in not soaking wet, so. Right, okay, now very carefully, I'm going to pick up, I'm, just, I'm going to have a blue beak this time. Uh, I had Bermuda Bay, Bay last time, but I'm going to have blue this time. And that I'm just colouring straight on. So, there we go, that is our hummingbird, suitably coloured. And I am just going to grab my heat tool again and my piercing tool just to dry this off before we put it all together. Um, I'm going to use the low setting because I don't really want um, to heat up the embossing powder anymore. I just want to dry my dry my paint. And it's as simple as that. I mean, it's not completely dry yet, but uh, it's not far off. But if I just pick that up and do it from the back a bit, that will do, as they say. So, there we go. As I say, really simple technique. So if we bring back in our card base, We've already got the flower, so uh, in some dimensionals. And I need a few because obviously we've wob we've wobbled the paper a wee bit, so it's worth being a little more generous with your dimensionals than you would normally be, uh, just so that it'll help flatten everything out a bit. Uh, I mean, don't go mad, but you know, just just allow that. Um, a few more than usual. It's possibly a good idea. Um, bum, bum, I really want something there. So let me see what I can see. I can I can do that probably. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm going to put my flower down first, and then I will put my bird on top, as it were. So, flower. And then the bird. Now, um, to order any of these products, just pop over to my online store, which you'll find a link to my online store in the description bar below, but you will also find a link to the blog posts that I have done for this project, um, and I'll have close-up pictures and uh, that sort of thing. Um, and there will be a list of everything that I have used. Um, there so you can just click on that and you will find all the things you want so there we go so that was the original this is the one we made together i hope you enjoyed that if you did do give it a thumbs up um, if you've got any questions or comments please add those below if you want to contact me by email my email contact details are over on my blog post you know i've just realized that i've had the camera crooked all this time let me just straighten you out a wee bit there you are um, so, yes, all my contact details are over on my uh, website, which, as I say, is linked below. Um, if you order from me, I should say when you order from me, uh, if you're in the UK, then please use the host code if your order is under £150, uh, and then you'll get a share in the host rewards. For every £30 you spend on my online store and use the host code, you get a sunflower voucher, collect 10 of those, uh, within a two-year period, and you can cash those in for £30 of product. So it's just my way of saying thank you again. And if you use the host code, you also, not only do you get a thank you gift and, uh, sorry, thank you card and gift from me, which I send out to everyone, whether they use the host code or not, um, but if you use the host code, you also get a share in the stamping rewards, and it's just something that I share, you know, I work out how many rewards we've got, number of people who've used the host code, divide one into t'other, and that's how much I will spend on whatever the reward will be that month. I normally get them out mm, roughly this sort of time of the month, because by the time I've ordered them and packed them up. So thank you very much indeed. That was Waffle City. Do remember that during celebration, when you spend £45 or more on my online store, you get free products from the celebration brochure. It's also a great time to join my team, be it be you in the UK, France, Germany, Austria or the Netherlands, uh, more than happy to welcome you to my team. I do most of my team stuff through Facebook Lives, so because I've got teams spread all around the UK. I think Northern Ireland is the only is the only part of the UK I don't have anyone at the moment, but Scotland, Wales and England. Um, so most of the stuff is done by Facebook Live. Um, anyway, thank you very much indeed, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!